great. The Bible said Isaac went forward. He continued to be great until he became exceedingly great. So that means that every new day must be better than the day before. Amen. Every new month must be better than the month before. Every new year must be better than the years before. I'm prophesying that to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anything that has limited you before now, I am praying that God's spirit will work for you. Amen. You shall pursue. You shall recover Amen. all. You shall overtake. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All that is yours that the enemy took advantage of in the past, they are coming back to you Amen. in multiple forms. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your peace, your joy, your money, everything that you've lost, by the help of God, by the mercy of God, you will pursue, Amen. you will overtake, Amen. and you will recover all. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So people of God, I'm going to continue on the series that I started last week, Abundance of Rain. And I remember that the last scripture that I read was from Deuteronomy chapter uh, 28. So I'm going to go there. Let's just bow our heads briefly. Father Lord, I thank you once again for the opportunity to look into your word and teach your people. Holy Spirit, I pray that you explain, interpret this word that you have released, Lord, for this time to your people. Let them receive it Amen. and let it transform them. Amen. Let your word take them from where they are to the next level that you have for them. Amen. That new dimension, Lord, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So last week, I talked a little bit about abundance. I talked a little bit about rain. And I said that to have abundance of something means to have more than enough. Praise God. To have more than enough. A synonym of abundance can be plenty. You know, can be plenty, can be uh, surplus. You know, surplus, surplus upon surplus. My prayer for every one of us is that before there will be a need, there shall be an abundance of supply Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said, before there shall be a need, there shall be an abundance of supply Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I remember one time I needed to pay a bill of about close to about twenty thousand dollars, close to about twenty thousand dollars. And then one of my investment that month, for whatever reason, just produced the money already. Hallelujah. So before a demand was made for me to make the bill, the money was already available. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. before there's a need, there shall be an abundance of supply. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Anyone who wants to come and bring you share, maybe because you are owing them, or because you did something together, or whatever it may be. Before it will get to that point, God would have shown up for Amen. you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God would have shown up for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There are some people also that maybe they are planning to give you a sack letter. They are mm. trying to stop you from your job. Mm. And that would have devastated you mm. if God did not have a different plan for you. Mm. And you know what God will do sometimes? God will send another job offer. Hey! As they are giving you one letter, you have received another appointment. Letter. I said, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. No matter what plans the enemy plan against you, it will not work against Amen. you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It will not work against you. Amen. So, to talk about abundance means to talk about the blessings of God, the surplus of the blessings of God. You know, it's very important for you and I to know that not only has God given us His Son, Jesus Christ, He has also given us His Holy Spirit. He has given us, can we say Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit. Spirit. Growing up, what I heard, what I learned, you know, about the most was Jesus, the Son of God. Praise God. Jesus came to save us, and you know, we all remember uh, John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that also believes in Him should not perish, but have 
everlasting life. I always heard that. In fact, the, the verse that you know follows that, which is also important, was not as emphasized as for God so loved the world, which is God has not sent his son to condemn the world, but he has sent his son so that through him the world may be saved. So what that means is we have not been called to be judges over people. We have not been called to be condemning people. We have not been called to come and do American idol, you know, critiques on people, praise God. We have been called to show mercy. We have been called to show the same mercy that we have obtained from Jesus, from God. Amen. So now the point I'm trying to make, people of God, is there is also the place of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Because when you, before you can begin to enjoy, before you can begin to live in this type of abundance that I'm talking about, abundance of rain, you must be able to, you know, understand the office of the Holy Spirit in your life. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit is like the voice of your conscience. Amen. The Bible says, as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Now, keep in mind, I said, Holy Spirit is like the voice of the conscience. Holy Spirit is not the conscience. Every man, every woman on the face of the earth has a conscience. Good conscience cannot get you to heaven. It is the Spirit of God. Amen. So when we are saved, when we have received Jesus into our lives, and now our spirit is renewed, you know, when Jesus comes, it takes us home. Okay, so having a good conscience is not what it takes to be a friend of God. What it takes is to humble ourselves, receive God's gift of salvation, Jesus Christ, and be filled with His Spirit. Hallelujah. Let's talk about the book of John. I don't even know why I'm going here, but I'm just going to move as the Spirit of God wants me to go here. Let's look at John chapter 14. Hallelujah. Gospel according to St. John chapter 14. I'm going to look at verse 15. I'm going to look at verse 16 and verse 17. If you're there, say amen. amen. Let's be together. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Let's do that one more time. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Verse 16. And I will pray the Father. Look at that. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Another comforter. Not the voice of the conscience. Renew, I'm talking about renewed conscience, but when the Holy Spirit steps in, he renews your conscience. Hallelujah. Because, I mean, what's the difference if you, you know, well, Peter has a conscience, Samuel has a conscience, and let's say you are not born again, you are born again, she's not born again. What makes you, what makes you different? It's the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God that singles us out. We are a carrier of His presence. The Spirit of God is His presence. Hallelujah. Now, verse 16 says, and I will pray the Father. Verse 16. I will pray the Father. Watch this now. I will pray the Father. And it shall give you another comforter. So, we have one comforter before. And that's Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one goes to the Father but by me. Hallelujah. But by me. Jesus said, I am come that you may have life. And so that you may have the life abundantly. So many to say, you have not been comforted before. So God sent Jesus to comfort you. Jesus is your first comforter. He comes to take us from the life of struggles. He comes to take us from, the, from, from living in bondage. Jesus came to comfort us. Jesus, the Bible says in John 10, 10, it said, The thief coming not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Anyone they steal from needs comfort. Anyone who has lost someone needs someone to comfort them. Praise God. So Jesus came to bring comfort. Hallelujah. We all know about Jesus. Yes. 
Yes. The, the Bible said, it pleases God that all fullness dwells in Jesus. Jesus gives us access to God. And as we develop our work with God, as we continue to grow in God, the presence of God, which is the Spirit of God, begins to be more real in our lives. And that's what's going to make you do things you could never imagine yourself doing before. That's what's going to make you see things you could never have imagined yourself seeing before. Because now you are a carrier of His presence. Now, when you receive Jesus, Jesus is saying now in verse 15, let's go to verse 15. Jesus is saying now, Hallelujah. Now, because I don't want us thinking now, when you hear commandment, I don't want to think it is all, all, all commandments. All commandment. This was Jesus speaking. Amen. This was Jesus speaking. He said, if you love me, he was preaching to the people. He said, if you love me, if you say that you love me, he said, keep my commandments. This is not Isaiah speaking now, praise God. This is not Moses speaking. This is not Elijah. Jesus himself. You know, in the, in the Bible, you see that some of the Bibles, when you open them, you see that whenever Jesus spoke, they are always in red. Some Bibles, I don't know if you're familiar with some of those Bibles. Mm -hmm. when, whenever Jesus spoke, you, you see that they, they, write, they print them out in red. You know, whenever others spoke, it was just black. You know, this was one of those red uh, part of the Bible. If you love me, keep my commandment. And then verse 16. Let's go to verse 16 now. Now it said, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comfort. I don't know about you, but I want all of God. I want all of God. All of God. All that God has for me. That's what I want. All that I can get. That's all I want. That's everything. I want everything. He shall give you another comfort that he may abide with you forever. Amen. He may abide with you forever. Let's go to the next verse. Let's read this together. Let's go. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, Neither know him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Amen. And shall be in you. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come into my heart. Come right into now. my heart. Come right and now. dwell in my life come right now. In, my life in right the now. name of Jesus. Name of come Jesus. and lead and guide me in guide all me. of my ways. In the name of Jesus, lead and guide me in all of my ways. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. You know, I was driving the other day. Amen. I was driving. I was on Van Wyck Expressway. You know, some, some of you might know Van Wyck Expressway. And as I was driving, I was going to approach uh, a, a time. And as I was getting closer, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me to slow down. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord told me, slow down. And as I slowed down, another uh, truck, a trailer, as a matter of fact, just bypassed me and got into a major accident in my face. And all I just did was just swear to the left and I continue my journey. Nobody will stop you on your way to your destination. I said nothing will distract you on your way to your destination. In the name of Jesus. I'm talking about the way the Holy Spirit was in us. And that's why you and I we must always create the atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. When you when you when you go to a home where couples are fighting, it's very hard for the Holy Spirit to dwell in such a place. 
Because Holy Spirit is a spirit of peace. It's a spirit of peace. Hallelujah. Amen. When you go to a place where the leadership, there's always confusion. It's not a good place for the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible said in, in the book of uh, Psalms 1. He said, let me even use uh, Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He makes me beside what? Still waters. No, no commotion, no pandemonium. Leave me the part of still waters. Have you heard people tell tell us about small still voice, still small voice? Holy mm -hmm. Spirit likes easy. Mm -hmm. Amen. No crack crack. No, no trying to do things by yourself. No trying to win things. Amen. Acknowledge His presence. Amen. Know His functionality because what you don't know will not work for you. You know there are some benefits that. U.S. citizens can qualify for, and it's not automatic. They have to apply. Mm -hmm. Although they qualify for it, but until they apply, they won't get it. Until you are conscious that there's another comforter. You, you will live a successful, successful life. And don't get me wrong, Jesus. Yes, you will live a successful life, but you are not, you are not maximizing the presence of the Holy Spirit. You are walking with conscience only. That's not right. You do not allow your mind to be renewed. Holy Spirit renews your mind. Holy Spirit leads your emotion. Because your emotion is a bad leader, but it's a good follower. The Bible says man is a trapper type being. You have a spirit, you have a soul, and you have a body. You got to let all your, every part of your, yourself to be led by the Spirit of God. There's a Spirit in every man. But you must submit to the leadership of the Holy Spirit in your life. People of God, and that's why it's very essential for us that whatever we do, you know, because we get busy, especially those who are living in a country like this. Because you gotta pay, you know, your bills, you, there's so many things you gotta take care of. But guess what? Sometimes we get so, so, uh, I, I don't want to use the word brainwashed. We get so busy learning some things about certain things, you know, that are not particularly what we would have loved to. But you, every single day you are by the computer, you are entering some things, you are doing the same routine, you are doing, that's why you must counteract what you do. With time that you spend with God, so that you are continue to grow. Otherwise, because those people that you relate with at work, majority of them don't know God. Majority of them, what they have is just conscience. But you want to take it to the next level. That's why you always got to create time with God. Amen. Spend time with God. You know, every single day, have a time. That you spend to study the word. Study the word of God. Grow. Amen. Engage God. Engage his spirit. Engage him so strongly. That even when you are in a place. Where there is commotion. You can recognize the voice of the spirit of God. You know. My wife and I. We were watching an Indian movie. Brother Peter. We were watching an Indian movie and the Holy Spirit spoke to me while we were watching an Indian movie. We were watching an Indian movie and I told my wife, I said, I'm about to receive a call from New York City Department of Social So and So. And they just called me five minutes later. My wife was shocked. My wife was shocked. My wife was shocked. It's a relationship. And it doesn't get real if you have not nurtured the relationship. It doesn't get real. You just become like other people. I have seen some Christians who just profess that, but they don't have the real substance. They don't have the real, it's the real substance that makes the difference. Yes. And those who have the real substance are those who are doers of his word, yes. not just hearers. Those who are practitioners 
of his word. Those who, 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 you know, who has been offended. You know, like some people, they've been offended so, so bad. And the moment they hear a word on forgiveness, they just want to forgive. Those are the type of people that will enjoy God. Those are the type of people that will enjoy the fullness of God. Those who hear the word and they want to do it. Someone came to me for help, you know, one time, and, and the, I was busy, but I had, what, I had what he needed from me, although I was busy at the moment. So I was, I was going to tell this person, I'll see you, you know, give me a, a couple of minutes or something, or let us meet another time. And then as I was about to talk about, the Spirit of God reminded me of his word that said, if you are in a position to help, don't procrastinate, help now. Not later. I just turned back. I suspended what I was doing. And I ran after the brother. And I did what I rendered the help he needed from me. Doers of the world. Those are the ones that really know their God. Those are the ones that honor God. You honor God. In your home. I can come here now and fake things. How am I at home when you are not there? How do I behave when you are not there? Holy Spirit knows you. He knows your nakedness. He knows everything about you. Make your work with him so real that it doesn't matter. In the place of chaos, you can still hear his voice. Amen. That's why when you go to, uh, you know, when you take your child to a place and there's so, so much noise and you and your child happens to be crying, you will know that's my child crying because you are used to your child's voice. I know my sheep. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. So, the presence of God, the Spirit of God, must be functional in your life. Don't make him like, uh, uh, what's this called? Like a vaccine. They put, you know, vaccine, they say it's like a dead, they put a dead stuff of whatever that is the disease in one's body. I hope I'm right there, Apostle. Don't, don't be, don't be saved and you're not using the presence of God the way you should. And you are still struggling. All this being is trying to tell you to do something. You are struggling because you have not nurtured his presence that well in your spirit. You are still struggling. You are born again for how many years? You are still struggling. they are going through the same things that baby Christians are going through. You should have grown. Infants become toddlers. Toddlers become preschoolers. Preschoolers become school age children. Preschool. School age children become young adults and adults and young adults. Adult. You gotta grow. If we grow physically, we must grow spiritually. We must grow spiritually. Amen. When a child is always sucking on milk, a time comes. Parents will be concerned. You should be eating strong meat now. Milk, milk, milk. Too much milk can cause hypercalcemia. Too much milk. You need to step out of that. You need to, you know, that's why it's always good, people of God. For us, to create time to study the word ourselves. Because if you don't create time to study the word of God, you are creating time for something else. Something else will be growing in the place of God's word that should be growing in your life. You know, when I was working at the Department of Corrections, you know, as a program specialist, you know, I usually would report, I would report like 5 a.m. You know what that means? I have to have woken up way before <laughs> I have to drive down. Amen. And to me, I love the challenge. Because part of the reason why I took the job then was to be able to support the work of God. Because I don't like to rely on tithes of people or offering of people. I don't like to do that. I like to tell the truth anytime I want to tell the truth. So whatever I can do that God has empowered me to do, I like to do it. Praise God. Those who are faithful, God will bless them. Those who are not faithful, God will help them so that they can be faithful. Amen. So, because I took up that assignment, because I took up that assignment, I now will be there at 5 a.m. And when I will get there at 5 a.m., not many people are there. I decided to pray one hour every time I would get to office. I would be there. I would pray on the place. I enjoyed myself. 
If I drive into office, I will drive and be praying. I will pray. When I get to office, the first thing I will, I will saturate the place with the blood. I raise an altar. Because some people carry voodoo to job. Yes. Some people, yeah! <laughs> you, you'll be shocked. <laughs> some people carry voodoo to job. You better carry Jesus there. Amen. You raise an altar wherever you go. Raise an altar there. It could be in the bathroom. Maybe you purposely go to the bathroom and spend seven minutes, which is distant. If you don't spend 15 minutes, it doesn't be concerned. <laughs> So it could be your altar. That seven minutes while you are there, you pray silently. When you do it the first day, you do it the second day, you do it by the end of the first week, two weeks, you'll be shocked anytime you enter there. Everyone's are hoping for you. Yeah. If they want to fire you, they can't fire you because you are raised an altar. <laughs> Ministry angels are there. Yeah. They can't hurt you. Yes. Except God is ready to move you to another place. They can't move you. Because you have raised an altar there. That's why in every home, an altar must be raised. Yes. An altar must be raised. Anywhere you are, if you're going to spend more than five hours in a place every day, you must raise an altar there. Yes. If, you, if something will take your time and you're spending five hours or more, an altar must be raised there. If you don't raise that altar, another altar has to be raised. You'll be shocked. Spending seven minutes on Monday, seven minutes on Tuesday, you add them up by Friday, 35 minutes. You know how many minutes people do? people waste? No altar race. And so, you know, then something comes up, somebody speaks heal of them at their place of work. They, 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 they write them up. All manner of things happen. All manner of things happen. But when you raise an altar, everybody will just love you. Some things that you could have been penalized for because you raised an altar, everybody just shuts their mouth. Because you raised an altar. You raise an altar. You spend five hours, and I just I'm just even being conservative by saying five hours. People usually spend seven hours or more. Seven hours, seven times five, that's five hours. You raise an altar, seven minutes, just seven minutes. It could be in the bathroom, and some people are fortunate, they have they are office to themselves only. Ah! Oh my goodness. Hey. That place becomes ill center. Yeah. Anyone who enters, they get you. Yeah. Because you have raised an altar there. Yeah. Hey. Because you have raised an altar there. The office I was working at a DOC before I left, praise God, it's like three people there. Three people there. I get there five. Some other person gets at like 6.15 a.m. So another person gets at like 8 o'clock. Amen. So when I will get at like 4.5 or you know, close to 5, once I enter there, I will pray up the place. Pray up the place. By the time those people come, they will just be smiling. 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 Just be smiling. Amen. And so when, whenever I just enter into the office, I'm praying up the place. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Amen. Amen. So these are some things we got to do so that we can begin to enjoy the abundance of God. So that you don't leave anything behind. You position yourself for all that God has for you so that nothing can stop your blessing. Do you know that Daniel, Daniel prayed to the Lord. He decided to pray and fast for 21 days. And the Bible said the blessing was released the first day. Amen. The first day that they prayed. Even though he planned to pray for 21 days, planned to pray and fast for 21 days, the answer to his prayer was released the first day. But the Bible said the priest of Pasha, the priest of Pasha contended against his, his answer. I'm praying for you. By the blood of Jesus. That they did not have the blood of Jesus. You have the blood of Jesus. So it's very easy for you. By the blood of Jesus, any prince of Pasha standing on your promises, standing on your blessing, we destroy them. In the name of Jesus. Any prince of Pasha standing on your blessing, we destroy them. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Your blessings from
from manifesting. Amen, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. So people of God, you must understand the office of the Holy Spirit. Very important. So you 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 gotta see yourself talking like the people you hear talking, you know, that you, you desire their, the grace of God upon themselves, upon them, the, the anointing of God upon them. When people say, I have the Lord say this, you should be able to say that. You must get to that point. Everybody can get there. Because we're in the New Testament. What is the New Testament? Jesus. As many as received him, to them he gave power. Can you say power? Power. As many as received him, Receive to them again power to power. become the sons of God. Yes. You can. You got to spend time. You got to be intentional. You got to be deliberate. Everywhere you go, you must be a territorial commander. An altar that you raise is what's going to make that happen for you. Yes. Yes. You got to raise the altar. You got to raise the altar. So that as these blessings begin to land on you, as these blessings begin to land on you, nothing will stop it. Amen. Nothing will stop it in Jesus' name. Amen. I said nothing will stop your blessings in Jesus' Amen. name. You have to raise an altar. And as you raise an altar, you must not touch unclean things. You must not touch unclean things. You know, I was watching a movie with Lady Apostle. And and this man wanted some major breakthrough <laughs> in his life. You know, he was miserable, so he needed some major breakthrough. And you know what this man had? He had the rosary. He had the rosary, so he was uh, doing the Holy Mary and all that. And after I was done with that, he took out the Quran. I don't know what they call that thing. The Muslim thing, he decided to do that too. After I was done with that, he decided to call the name of Jesus. He was trying to use all of the above means. All you need is a true relationship with God. Can you say true relationship? True relationship. Oh, not the one that is deceitful. Not the one that you do to please pastors. You know, that's some relationship where when pastor is around, that's where you want to do right. You talk right because pastor is around. I'm talking about what you do when pastor is not seeing you. Hey. I'm talking about what you do when you are at your place of work. I'm talking about what you do everywhere you go. Hey. It is just right. You have a true relationship with God. God can vouch for you. Hey. Yes. Yes. People of God, this one, I'm going to dwell on our bond. Of rain. Amen. I'm just, I'm just, you know, making sure that everywhere is taken care of. And because this is very important, I watched 